Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to what would appear to be a little bit of a different vlog today. I'm actually telling you a bit of a porky pie, it's not the morning, it's 4.55 in the afternoon and I've been doing boring admin stuff which most of the time I tend not to vlog but on this particular situation I thought it would be very useful to share it with you. So. In front of you I have a Harrison's Stout recipe which is available on the website as you'll know and it has certain parameters locked into it which from batch to batch we try and replicate because of course you're going to get fluctuations in uh, the seasonal produce such as the sugar content of the barley and the alpha acid content of the hops etc etc. So. On the back here, we usually have some uh, information to allow you to dial the recipe in. And on this particular instance, <laughs> I see it doesn't contain the IBU calculation. That must be just here anyway. Um, but on the vacant gesture, for instance, in the notes we do have I don't know if you can see this as clearly it says dial in the IBUs to 26 to match the original estimated bitterness so what you would do is you would come into this particular beer and you'd have a look at what the IBU is meant to be on the stout and you would alter the hop additions to correspond with your required IBU target and we can also do the same with our original gravity so in fact we'll start with the original gravity and then I'll pull up the can label for this particular beer and hopefully if I just shoot in here now I should be able to do that relatively quickly uh, into the artwork into the can labels and into the stout and we'll be able to see really quite quickly at the side what we've got our IBU calculations at 38 okay so 38 IBUs and indeed we've got 38.4 on here so in fact I'm just going to make a little note in here so uh, use the 60 minute boil edition to dial in the IBUs to match the original estimated bitterness of 38 IBUs. There we go. So that one is now specific for this particular recipe. We'll save that down. So we're going to go ahead first and have a look at some lab reports that I've got back from Murphy and Sons Limited and they are the exact numbers that this beer has tested out at and we're going to start by altering our gravity figures to reflect our actual brew day that happened in real life so you'll see that a few things will be a little bit out but it's not difficult for us to change so let's work on the original gravity of 1044 on the brew sheet I've recorded 1045.0450 or 1 they've come back at 1044.07 they've just got the decimal place in the different position but I am about 0.1 out on my recorded sheet so therefore I am probably being a little bit generous there so if we come into the session on this particular beer and we just pop all our numbers in as the estimates so we've got 542 on there we've got 500 litres for the batch size we've got let's just pop in 0, 4 oh, one too many zeros there 4, 0, 4, 0 you'll notice that I've got 5 decimal places on my gravity units because I like the precision simply because we're dealing with HMRC and this helps me to dial things in a little bit tighter than 
I usually would, perhaps if I was just doing this for homebrew. But let's say 480 there. Right, now here's one. Our measured final gravity. I've recorded 1.009. Murphy's have told me that it's 1.00845. So I was very close, in fact. So we're going to go and put that in here. 1.00845. There we are. And then we're going to change our measured OG up here in this particular box. Hope you can see that well enough. And our our measured OG was 1.0450, but Murphy's are telling us through their Anton Parr alkalizer and density meter that our density was 1.04407. So we'll change that now to 1.04407. Oh, 07 that's uh, an extra zero required oh no that's perfect wonderful work and then that gives us a measured ABV of 4.7 let's have a look what Murphy says Murphy says it's 4.6 so obviously Beersmith have maybe one or two rounding errors in there but that's close enough for us then we can now see that there are real numbers that have been plugged in and if we go to this side and we have a look at the ingredients list we can see on the ingredients here that I did indeed put 63 kilograms of pale malt in there 13 kilograms of flaked barley in fact I'm just going to round these down because I haven't got the point zeros. So I want to put in the exact recipe that Murphy's analysed in order for us to get a decent reflection of the numbers. Then we've got the black patent in there at 6 kg. Okay, roasted barley at 1.3. And chocolate malt as well at 1.3. Super. So now we've got all those numbers in there properly. And we'll just alter this to 800 grams because we put 800 grams in the original recipe. There we go. Now we'll go and have a look. You'll notice that our measured OG hasn't changed and our measured FG hasn't changed because they're numbers that we've put in there of course so we go back to the design and we want to see the original gravity down here on this bar just where the little green and red bars are we want to see that reflected as the original gravity given to us by Murphy's and the way we do that because we're not going to change the quantities of the ingredients we're going to change this number here the brew house efficiency and I'm normally in the 80s this is a bit low so that'll explain why we're seeing a low estimated original gravity there so let's just change this to 80 and see what we have still a bit low shall we say 85 now we're a little bit high 84 now we're getting close we want 4407 so we'll go for 83 and then point something. Point 0.5, point 0.6, point 0.7. Hold on, I've gone too far, I've enough. It was 4407. So we're going to go to 82.9. Six, five, four, five, six. There we go. So we've just figured it out. Our brew house efficiency was 82.46. The estimated mash efficiency was 81.4. So now we've just plugged our numbers back in 
and it's given us our estimated brew house efficiency for this particular beer. So we know if we want to make this beer again and we want to hit our numbers again, then we would use that 82.46. Of course, there are other factors that will have an influence on exactly what amount of sugar you get out of this beer. But this is good practice. And it's also a legal requirement for a commercial brewer. You need to send off your uh, products for analysis to make sure that you've got some reference as to where your numbers are and that you're paying the right amount of beer duty. So now we've got that in, we're happy that we're, we're calculating the right ABV and we've got the right brew house efficiency on there. So the next time we send a batch of stout off to be tested, we should be considerably closer. You normally get 0 0.25 uh, kind of percentage points either way on your declared ABV. And anything up to 0 0.5 is allowable, but you really need to be investigating if you're that far out. And it's all written in notice 226 on the government website. Uh, if you're so inclined to figure it all out for yourself. I mean, if you need some light reading to help you get to sleep, th this is that. Next thing I want to look at is the IBU calculation. And the IBUs are a bit of a shocker, actually. So, obviously, I've got Challenger 2016 here. I don't know now, looking at this recipe, exactly what hops I put into this beer because this is just... A basic um, what would you call it a uh, template recipe for stout moving forward so when I print one of these off I don't do it on this system I print it off something called the BMS system and uh, that keeps track of stock and produce I use the beersmith one to alter things like the ABV and the IBUs so the IBU content of this beer on Beersmith is coming out at 34.3 and if we have a look at what Murphy's have told us we've got we've actually hit 21.8 and of course we've just had a look we want to hit 38 okay so we've just put all our numbers back in we now know what we've got and we know where we need to be this is also very easy I'm just going to check yeah, I'm just going to change this hop utilisation back down to 100%, which will bring us down a touch. Um, you don't need to change that on your end unless you're commercial brewing. It should be set to 100% anyway. I've fiddled about with that in the past. Now, because we've got just the one hop addition on this beer, it makes it very easy for us to figure out what the IBUs were of these Challenger hops that we put in. So... We're going to say the IBUs on the packet were 7.3%. And, of course, the hops wouldn't have been just freshly picked from the vine. They would have been up to four years old, maybe even older than that. But usually they would have been a year to two years old because I tend to generally buy as close to the current crop year as possible unless we've got something hanging about in the hop store. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep an eye on this bitterness number here, 31.1 now, and we're going to ra we're going to change we're going to change the IBU content, the alpha acid content, sorry, until we hit Murphy's number of 21.8. So I'm going to say 5.5. Oh, we're close. That's 23.5. Let's go back in again. Let's just do 5.5. 3, 22.6, let's go in again and just change it to 5, 21.3, need to come up just a touch, uh, let's go 5.1, 21.8, now that's close, that, in fact that's spot on, so if we have a look at the Murphy's report, they're saying that our bitterness came in at 21.8 IBUs. So we go back to Beersmith, and we've now got 21.8 IBUs. That tells us that those hops that we used, and I'm going to make a note on it on my recipe sheet, were actually 5.1% uh, 
alpha acid. So we didn't hit our target of 38. So now we've got all that recorded, what we can do is figure out how much hops we would require to get to our 38 IBUs, which is what we wanted originally. So we'll come across to this hop IBU table and there it is for us. We just punch in 38 IBUs and it's going to tell us instead of 800 grams we need 1.397 kilos of hops to get to that figure. So there we have it. Now that as far as input back into the system is concerned is complete. We'll save that down. We'll come into the notes and we'll just go uh, referenced as per lab report and then we'll put in today's date of the 19th of the 4th 2022 so we know that we've had a look at this beer and we've changed it up so now when we go to brew this again instead of putting 800 grams of challenger hops in we're going to need to put almost 1.4 kilos but of course I'll also alter this and we'll put uh, challenger as per lab report and then we know that that 5.1 is as per the lab report instead of the 2016 so if we want to brew this with some new challenger hops that we've just bought from Brookhouse hops let's say and the alpha acid on those challenger hops is 8% then we'll change this to 8% like that there we'll go 8 and then what you'd have to do is come back to your hop IBU again and change that back down to 38 and it'll tell us we need 890 grams to get there so there we have it I hope that made sense I've got a whole host of these lab reports to get through in fact I've pretty much sent every single beer that we've got on the website off for uh, a report. So if you've not seen one of these before, this is it. You can see that it's got, you, you can just send off for an ABV analysis if you want. You don't have to do all the pH and everything else. But I thought it would be really handy to do. Also the colour is on there in EBC. If you have a look, the colour that I've got is a little bit out. So... We probably don't have the colour correctly dialed in on things such as the black malt. You know, we could just put an extra one on there, for instance, and you'll see the colour shoot up. It's as simple as that. But I think I'm going to end the video there, folks. I don't want it to go too long. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, we'll see you on the next video, I guess. That's 18 minutes of your life. You're not going to get back, are you? Could be worse. <laughs> Cheers boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you on the next one.